Good morning and welcome to the Microsoft New Commerce Experience Partner Update. My name is John Gorton. Um, we're going to talk through um, some of the changes Microsoft are making with regards to New Commerce um, and uh, CSP. So just introducing our speakers, um, oh sorry, the, the housekeeping. Uh, you will be muted throughout, um, throughout the webinar. Um, there is a questions box on the right hand side, so if you do have any questions as we go through the slides, um, please do write them in the uh, in the chat window there. Uh, we will do a Q and A at the end of the session just to answer off uh, all, any questions that you have. Um, the webinar will be recorded, and we'll make that available to you later today, along with a copy of the slides. Um, uh, there is a survey at the end of the session. Uh, if you'd like a call back from one of our account managers, um, then please uh, just uh, complete the survey, and uh, we'll be in touch. So. Uh, the speakers, uh, I'm John Gorton, the head of the Microsoft practice at Bytes. Um, we're also joined by Glenn Rogers, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, our licensing asset management consultant, and Ian Lane, who is our head of uh, channel sales here. So um, we're here to talk about Microsoft's new um, commerce experience and, and what that looks like, um, specifically the changes to the CSP program. We'll also talk through the uh, recent announcement where Microsoft are increasing uh, Microsoft 365 pricing by 10% uh, and how you can effectively defer that um, with your customers. Um, look at the new monthly subscription term offers, the annual offers and the a new 36 month offer, offer in um, CSP. Uh, and then we'll move on to um, how the Bytes um, quantum tool set can, can help you and your customers um, define your kind of ongoing Microsoft requirements. So if we look back over the years, um, we can see Microsoft's volume, pro volume licensing programs uh, have continually evolved. You know, back before uh, Microsoft launched the enterprise agreement, we had just open uh, for SMB customers and they select agreement for kind of your, your larger uh, or medium and large organizations. Since then, Microsoft have uh, continually evolved you know, those licensing programs to give customers more purchasing options and flexibility. However, obviously with that, um, what we do see is uh, the added complexity, especially as many of those licensing programs you know, were designed for transacting on-premises software uh, and not necessarily cloud services. Obviously, they didn't exist back then. Uh, so, you know, what is new commerce? Uh, well, Microsoft are, are basically on a mission to simplify how customers um, buy and to, to modernize the tools that you know, Bytes and, and, and you as partners use um, to transact um, and that includes their commerce platform. So many of Microsoft's licensing programs including the CSP as it was when it was uh, first built um, sits on Microsoft's legacy um, commerce platform and what they're doing is, is basically updating that uh, with regards to new commerce uh, and that's where their new commerce experience comes in. So what is the new commerce experience? Well, um, it, it was effectively launched in Microsoft's Cloud Solution Provider Program, so CSP, um, for Azure Plan, Service Subscriptions, Azure res Reservations back in 2019. Um, and October this year, uh, as in next month, um, Microsoft will introduce a new set of offers in the in the new commerce experience, um, specifically for uh, Microsoft 365, Dynamics 365, Power Platform, and Windows 365. At the same time, they're going to uh, release a, an array of new features and functionalities, um, basically in response to partner requests and, and customer needs. So that's the 14th of October. It becomes available. Um, you do have some time um, be before. Um, you know, we're, we're kind of forced into migrating customers into the e-commerce experience. So I'll talk through that in a, in a few slides. So, <clears throat> you know, looking back at the uh, the numerous um, uh, offers Microsoft make available through their various licensing programs and platforms, um, <clears throat> as I said, it, it is complex. As you can see on the left hand side there. There are a multiple you know, number of different licensing programs available. <clears throat> uh, each each of those with their own set of terms and conditions, um, different licensing terms, um, and it is super complex. So 
the nirvana for Microsoft is to, is to get to a you know a single um, one agreement type. So that's the Microsoft customer agreement. All customers will will sign the customer agreement, and, I, and actually that's in place today. So all of your customers that are buying, have been buying through CSP um, agree to the Microsoft customer agreement. Any customers buying Azure directly from Microsoft or you know buying through WebDirect again are already signing the the Microsoft customer agreement. So um, you know eventually uh, we'll get to a position where it doesn't matter whether we're buying through CSP, the enterprise agreement, or customers buying um, directly. Um, everyone will be buying through the Microsoft customer agreement, and it should only need to be signed once. That's the that's the concept here. The three um, kind of go to market um, motions that you can see on screen. We've got the breadth motion, and then that's what Microsoft are referring to um, CSP as being. So that's uh, you know designed for those smaller and, and medium sized organizations. Um, then we've got the enterprise agreement uh, that will morph over time, but as it stands today, there are, you know there's no immediate changes to the enterprise agreement. Uh, and then on the right hand side, we've got the kind of self service motions where customers are buying directly from uh, you know, from Microsoft or, or through WebDirect. So if we look at the new commerce roadmap, you know, you may have heard of it as uh, modern commerce in the past. Um, you know, like I said, Azure plan, perpetual software, uh, server subscriptions, Azure reservations, and third-party marketplace offers, all through CSP are already on the new commerce platform. Um, that started 2019. Last year, we saw um, you know, perpetual software being launched in the CSP program. That again went onto the new commerce um, platform. Uh, and now Microsoft, uh, kind of uh, the next evolution of that is to to add the per user offers, the the, the bit we're missing. So, um, you know, that, like I said, the, the Microsoft 365, the Office 365, and so on. So let me just talk through some of the kind of the, the, the release um, overview and, and the highlights. So um, I've broken down you know this into kind of uh, two buckets of a pros and a cons so let me just talk through the pros in, in some detail um today we've got th a three-year price protection uh, is available in csp for dynamics 365 in march microsoft will release a three-year offer for microsoft 365 what this means is customers will be able to um, price lock or make a three-year commitment um and and therefore lock in the price for a three-year term so um if you've got those customers that you know, can make a commitment or, or, or are worried about the, the price changing over a term, um, this kind of, I uh, say competes, but it works works in line with the Microsoft Enterprise Agreement where customers um, have the ability to, to, to price lock. Uh, we just need to think about the cancellation policy um, when working at 36 month um, terms. Uh, which I'll come on to um, in, a, in a slide or two. Uh, one thing that a lot of customers and partners have been asking for is billing alignment to calendar month. So finally, that's coming to CSP um, with the new commerce experience. So uh, at the moment with Bytes, um, we align our billing to the 18th of the month. Um, moving forwards with the new commerce experience, um, everything will align to calendar month. Um, which basically means Microsoft invoice bytes on the 8th of the following month. Uh, obviously, in turn, we'll, we'll invoice you guys. Um, but the, the the billing, the end customer billing, will be aligned to calendar month, which will you know, make uh, understanding invoices uh, so much easier. Um, the uh, we we'll have to, the ability to start customers off on a 30-day trial. Um, and then automatically convert that into a paid for offer if, if that's the route the customer wants to go down. Um, obviously we could still offer a trial and then just terminate it after the 30 days. Um, the, the, the way that works today is, 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 is not joined up at all. So we can offer a trial um, that kind of starts and ends and there is no automatic kind of uh, mechanism for, for moving that into a paid for offer, um, which basically means you need to do seat reassignment um, and make a purchase, you know, another purchase. So uh, this just makes things a, a bit easier. Uh, with regards to exclusive new offers, it's it's maybe uh, more of a marketing term, but 
Microsoft mean by that is any new products and offers will only be made available through the new commerce experience and not through the legacy CSP program. Um, so as, as we kind of move forwards into the future, uh, you know, Microsoft are, are not going to invest anything into legacy CSP. Everything uh, new is going to go into um, the commerce experience. With Windows 365, there's an option to select hybrid use benefit, um, and that's for customers who currently own Windows 10 or 11 subscription licenses, therefore reducing the cost of the service. Uh, Windows 11, by the way, will be available on the 5th of October next, uh, and then, well, obviously next month. Um, so um, if, if this works very similar to the hybrid use benefit um, for Windows Server. So if you think of an uh, Azure um, uh, virtual machine, if a customer spins up a, uh, a Windows Server virtual machine, if they have licenses with software assurance, they can select the hybrid use benefit um, button within the uh, virtual machine, and it basically reduces the cost um, so that the customer is not paying for the, the, the Windows Server license as part of the pay-as-you-go uh, consumption model. Uh, the Windows 365 model will, uh, will be the same. Uh, one thing that's missing uh, from legacy CSP, which uh, can cause some issues, is, is communications credits. So communications credits can be used as overage uh, for Teams calling plans. So, for example, if a customer uses all of their uh, minutes, their calling plan minutes, um, uh, if you didn't have anything set up, that user wouldn't be able to make any further phone calls. Um, one thing that you can do is to switch on or uh, add money towards uh, communications credits, which basically means if a user goes over their allowance, um, calls still happen, it just goes into an overage model where they're, they're billed um, based on usage. Uh, Multi-geo capabilities are finally coming to CSP, putting it on par with uh, you know what's available within the enterprise agreement. Um, it doesn't mean that any regional restrictions are lifted, so um, our customers' tenants must still be within the EU. Um, Basically, what multi-geo means is it creates a, a local replica of the customer data. Um, so if I give you an example, let's say you've got a, a customer um, with a UK um, tenant, uh, but they also happen to have an, uh, an Australian office. Um, for the Australian office to access the UK um, uh, Microsoft 365 tenant, like the, the, obviously it could be a lag. Um, what multi-geo capabilities do is to, is to create a replica of the data um, within the Microsoft Australian data center so that the users uh, in Australia are effectively accessing a local copy of their data. Uh, there is a, an additional cost for the uh, multi-geo capabilities. Uh, Microsoft haven't yet released the, the details of um, what that is. So uh, want to look out for as we uh, move towards release. Um, Customers will be able to schedule upgrades. So, for example, if you're coming to the end of a, an annual a, annual term and you uh, want to pre-plan an upgrade from E3 to E5, you know, along with the customer, um, that's something that you'll be able to do, uh, or they'll be able to do um, through through CSP and, and new commerce experience moving forwards. Um, uh, one thing for you guys is um, uh, the auto renew um, toggle. So, if you've got customers. Um, that you want to enable auto renew or, or switch off for, for certain subscriptions, um, you'll be able to do that within the Bytes Cloud dashboard moving forwards. Uh, another feature is to have alignment um, to subscription end dates. So um, it, just, it means everything could expire at the same time um, rather than having um, subscriptions kind of um, uh, expiring all over the place. Um, you know, one customer could have multiple. Um, different subscriptions uh, and have multiple end dates um, that again will have the ability to to align to a specific end date uh, for everything and then um, Microsoft plan on or have announced that there will be a launch promo um, uh, coming soon um, details of that uh, Microsoft haven't fully released yet um, but it's uh, safe to say that it's likely to be a price reduction um, to, to try and incentivize you know, use partners to, to move your customers uh, over to new commerce experience as soon as possible. If we look at uh, some of the negatives, so um, 
Microsoft are going to start enforcing a cancellation policy on the annual and multi-year offers. Um, so if you if you think about CSP today, customers are buying the annual term offers. So that, that is what's available in CSP today. It's an annual commitment, 12 month price lock. Um, or for, for Dynamics 365, there is a 36 month um, uh, offer. Um, but today you have the flexibility uh, to increase and decrease user counts um, on a monthly basis or even daily if you wanted to, um, purely because Microsoft have never enforced the cancellation policy. So in the e-commerce experience, Microsoft are going to enforce that cancellation policy. Uh, and I'll come on to the terms of that in, in a second. Um, it's uh, a good thing for you as, as, as partners um, because it now offers, you know, um, predictability so you can forecast for a full 12 months um, whereas before because a customer had that flexibility of of reducing um, obviously the, uh, you know, the, the the income could fluctuate on a month-to-month -month basis obviously the downside is it, it does reduce um, the the flexibility that is uh, you know you've had you, you've had um, in CSP um, you know, for the last few years uh, Microsoft are introducing a monthly term offer, um, so one that has you know a, a term of one month and then renews, um, like we have in in you know um, Web Direct and the MPSA. Those of you that are familiar with the Microsoft Products and Services Agreement, um, the the monthly term offer carries a price premium, as you know there is no uh, commitment to Microsoft. Uh, the price premium is set 20% above the uh, the price of the annual term offer. Um, so uh, one thing we'll need to do with your customers, you know, moving forwards, is to to understand where you've got a base level of uh, user licenses that don't need to fluctuate. Um, those users could potentially buy the annual committed offer, uh, and therefore have the price lock for 12 months. And then for those users where you need, you know, flexible working, uh, so for example, seasonal workers, um, they could uh, potentially buy the the new monthly um, subscription term. Uh, and then um, partner earning caps. So um, I will come on to this. Microsoft have released um, some, uh, you know, brief information around this, um, but effectively they are going to introduce um, caps on partners' earnings. Um, and that's not just incentives. Um, so for those of you that are eligible for Microsoft incentives, um, uh, they're also um, invoicing at recommended retail price for uh, seats over 2,400, but uh, more to follow on that one. So if we look at what's going to be available, this is just a high level. There is going to be a one month subscription term um, it will enable a customer to change the number of licenses on a month-to-month -month basis. Um, for the pleasure of doing so, uh, it is 20% more than the um, annual offer, um, as I said, because the customer is not making a commitment to Microsoft. Then we've got what's available today in CSP, which is a 12-month subscription. Um, billing options um, will include monthly or upfront. Um, and then there's a, a 36-month offer again like i say just to, to price lock for that full 36 months so if we look at some uh some of the uh the more you know detailed terms so um customers will now have the option of purchasing subscriptions you know like i said with the monthly term instead of just the annual term which is what you've got today um but it's important to note that this is a new offer um what we've got in csp today is that annual offer it's just that microsoft haven't enforced the cancellation policy um this is aligned with, you know, standard um, practices in, in Microsoft Web Direct and, and across multiple other industries. So if you, if you look at, um, you know, buying through Web Direct, Microsoft charge a premium of 20% for the monthly offer over the annual committed price. And it is just a, you know, a screen snip of um, uh, Microsoft Web Direct. If we look at uh, Microsoft 365 Business Basic as, a, as an example, you can see on the left hand side there that the, the kind of default option is the, the three pounds 80 per user per month um, for an annual commitment and then below that you've got all buy for four pounds 50 um, per user per month with a monthly commitment so same concept is coming to csp um, this concept um, 
you know, is like I say, is is has been around for for many years with Web Direct, um, and has uh, in fact been around in the Microsoft Products and Services Agreement for for you know a good few years as well. The actually the uh, premium is thirty percent in uh, Microsoft Products and Services Agreement. Uh, the other piece to um, talk about on here. Um, you know, obviously it's the cancellation policy. So if you think about the monthly offer, customers can cancel at the end of, end of any one month uh, with no further payment obligations. The new cancellation policy allows uh, customers to cancel subscriptions only within the first 72 hours, three days uh, from making the subscription available. So if they do that, they'll be, they'll be billed for the amount of time that the offer was made available, so one, two or three days. Um, obviously through to, to whenever they cancel it. Um, pricing subject to change on a monthly basis because um, you know, it's, it's a one month term, so there's no price lock. Um, but if you think of the reality there is pricing rarely changes month to month uh, within CSP anyway. So um, you may have customers uh, slightly concerned about that. Um, but, but if you look at the history of the price changes, uh, there have been very few in CSP actually. Customers will be able to change from monthly to annual term for any given product in any month. And the lower pricing for that annual term will be reflected obviously on, on the invoice to you. Um, with the annual offer, customers are making a commitment to Microsoft to purchase the product in the chosen quantities for a, a term of 12 months. Um, so, Unlike today, under the Microsoft's new commerce experience, it will not be possible to reduce the quantities um, during that 12 month period. So it's a commitment to Microsoft and to you as the partner. Um, you know, for, for that 12 month commitment, customers receive the pre uh, preferential price, price is fixed for 12 months. Um, customers can choose to prepay for 12 months, you know, like how the enterprise agreement works or they can choose to pay uh, on a monthly basis. Um, the, the important thing to note here is, is that, you know, is there still a 12 month commitment? So even if the customer chooses to pay on a monthly basis, they are committing to you uh, and you to us and us to Microsoft um, to, to make 12 monthly installments, cannot cancel during that 12 month term. So, um, Here's a bit of a, a credit risk um, because you guys are on the hook from your customers to, to make 12 annual um, payments with zero cancellation policy. Um, we have asked Microsoft if there, if there are going to be you know, an exception process. And today the answer we've had back from Microsoft is um, no. Um, so, so we're on the hook as you guys are on the hook as well. So maybe one thing to think about there is actually if you're offering the annual or the 36 month um, uh, payment terms, uh, sorry, uh, you know, uh, uh, term offers, um, maybe prepay is, is a good option there. And if customers want to make um, monthly payments, maybe the one month term is, is the better option there um, just to, you know, to overcome those um, uh, credit challenges. So there are some other um, uh, uh, benefits to you know behind the scenes um, with regards to new commerce experience. I, I talked about you know some of these uh, in, in, in some detail with the overview. So um, just to pull out a couple at the bottom of the screen here is the midterm SKU upgrade um, within the same product category. So uh, what this means is customers can upgrade from E3 to E5, for example. Um, um, seat reassignment is automatically done so you, if you think about today's experience um, effectively what you're doing is cancelling down the e3s and instead replacing with the e5 licenses but as part of doing that um, you have to reassign the seats so uh, reassign those user licenses um, with this kind of in place upgrade um, it makes life a lot easier there as well um what else have we got there we got billing pause um so uh, going back to the the potential credit risk um what we can do is put a customer's um subscriptions on pause so for dunning purposes so if you've got uh, any uh, credit you know customers not paying your invoice for example 
uh, we can put the subscription on pause. It does turn off their services. So only their admins can access their services. Um, so the users will not have access to, to any um, online services that they may have bought. Um, obviously until you unpause, at which point it will just basically resume. Um, so that that is available, um, and you know may well be used if we if we do have um, you know, issues where uh, customers aren't paying, for example. So those um, subscription states, as I mentioned, we've we've now got um, you know um, suspended, as was in kind of um, legacy CSP, is now going to be pause, and we've got resume, which is unpause, like I said. There is also um, the ability to cancel. Um, like I said, that's only available within that 72 hour window. After that time, so, uh, cancel is, is basically not available up until the end of the subscription term. The options, you know, these are just some, some thoughts um, and, and just to talk through kind of the, the key points here. Now, um, Customers will be able to purchase under the legacy model up until the end of February. Annual term subscriptions will uh, only run up until the 30th of September, at which point they will need to move to new commerce experience. Uh, NCE um, offers will be made available from the 14th of October, uh, and then customers, like I said, can purchase both offers, and run them side by side up until March, at which point we, we won't be able to process any um, new purchases or renewals in legacy. Um, customers committing to the annual new commerce experience offer before the end of Feb um, will receive the promotional pricing and avoid the 10% price increase, which uh, Microsoft announced recently, which comes into effect on the March price list. Um, so customers buying an annual subscription, either in legacy or new commerce um, before March will lock in prices, um, avoiding that 10% price increase. So that commercial price increases across all programs from March 2022. Um, it's not just CSP, so uh, one to bear in mind. Uh, changing partners. Um, so just thinking about, um, you know, the the cancellation policy. Um, changing partners today can be done through, um, you know, zeroing down the, the number of quantities through the outgoing partner. And then if you're the new partner, obviously increasing those subscriptions for that customer. Um, in new commerce experience, uh, that is removed um, because, um, because of the cancellation policy. So uh, when a customer buys through you as a partner, they are committing to you, to, to, like I say, to, to make either a pre prepay for 12 months, or if, they, if you've offered monthly billing, um, that's locked into you as a partner, so they can't move those subscriptions to another partner. So uh, just uh, just a key thing there to, to bear in mind. Likewise, they can't move to you or can't move those subscriptions to you. They can move to you and start buying through you as a new partner. Uh, so any new product um, obviously will, will go through you. So looking at, um, you know, uh, breadth channel economics is, is kind of how Microsoft determined this. So while Microsoft aren't making any changes to the current enterprise agreement or CSP program incentives today, um, they will implement future changes to align to how they reward and pay partners. So, and that is, you know, uh, managing all aspects of a customer's purchase, deployment and, and use of technology across all stages of, of the Microsoft customer lifecycle. So, uh, it's it's no longer around just transacting licenses. It is around you know helping customers um, uh, through 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 that entire journey. So uh, the timings for the introduction of the new commerce um, specific partner incentives and and the change to wholesale pricing um, uh, is, is basically March 2022 at the very earliest. So we're still waiting for more information on this one. Um, so. Uh, nothing is going to change incentive-wise just yet, but we've got to see uh, just just uh, up to six months um, to see the impact here. So uh, Microsoft um, believe that the key for partners is to to bring a full service approach to, to customer service through four specific ways: so advising, selling, building, and managing. So um, you need to be playing in kind of all four of these areas. Uh, to to make to be making the most out of kind of um, 
selling Microsoft product, I guess. Um, so um, one of the things they're putting in place is, um, if we look at the uh, the breadth of motion, which is the, the CSP, um, uh, partner runs credit is specific to uh, Microsoft Azure. Um, so if you've got the admi administration rights um, within your customers, um, when you're selling uh, or you know, transacting Azure uh, on a monthly uh, usage basis, um, partner owned credit is effectively the discount off RRP um, that we uh, and you receive uh, from Microsoft um, collectively through, through managing that customer's Azure environment. Without partner owned credit, or if your admin rights are removed by the customer, um, effectively we're invoiced at RRP by Microsoft um, for, for Microsoft Azure. Um, uh, as a CSP partner, we are obviously paid the transacting um, partner incentives um, uh, if you're eligible. So the uh, requirements this year actually have, have been reduced for CSP. Um, so uh, silver partners. Um, can take advantage of um, incentives. Uh, it was going to be just available to gold partners, but Microsoft have uh, uh, changed that to silver partners that uh, are also eligible now as well. Um, if we you know, look at the, the very bottom here, the, the kind of uh, two key points here. So we've got um, deals up to 2,400 seats uh, or $1 billion of Israel consumed revenue. So what does that mean? If we look at that in more detail, um, for any seats in new commerce experience, um, so Microsoft 365, Dynamics, Power Platform, Windows 365, etc., Microsoft are going to implement a cap of 2,400 seats, whereby you will earn um, incentives up to 2,400 seats. Again, if you're eligible, um, and uh, the margins will be available. So a discount off RRP for you to make a margin will be available again up to 2,400 seats. Everything over 2,400 seats, no, no incentives will be paid and Microsoft will invoice at RRP um, for everything over 2,400 seats. So just uh, one thing to bear in mind is, you know, is how that looks to your customers if you've got customers over 2,400 seats. With regards to new commerce experience, um, uh, Azure offers, so this is Azure plan in CSP, um, uh, they're going to put a cap in place of, of $1 million a year or you know, 84k roughly um, a month of dollars. Um, now what happens here is, is the incentives are removed. Um, so assuming you've still got those admin privileges um, for, for, you know, as it stands today, partner and credit will still be available to so still be able to make um, the margins on, on Azure services um, you know, moving forwards. So uh, I've included some um, resources uh, with regards to you know um, learning more. So there's there's the various different things. There's a Microsoft Readiness Map um, has links to to various different slide decks that you can you know, use uh, to to explain this to your customers. We will provide a copy of this slide deck, so you can feel free to to reuse that. Um, uh, but there's, yeah, there's, there's loads of uh, information on the Microsoft uh, partner website. Uh, the new pricing for Microsoft 365, so I just wanted to touch on this just to make sure that you're, you're aware. So this will um, come, in, continue, come into play at March 2022. So um, you know, without going into all the detail, Microsoft are, are basically suggesting that due to all of the innovation, um, the, the 24 new apps that have been introduced to Microsoft 365, um, the, the 1400 enhancements that it's had, you know, new features and capabilities over you know, since launch. Um, <clears throat> uh, it's never really had a price increase. So uh, if we think about you know, a launch in, in 2011, Office 365 only included Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook, Link as it was back then, uh, Exchange and InfoPath. So, um, that Microsoft are making a, a price increase across uh, Microsoft 365 and Office 365. And you can see the, the US dollar price changes on the right hand side there. Obviously, that we converted into local currency, um, uh, or, or, you know, when Microsoft released the price list in March. Um, 
But yeah, that takes effect in March, affects all customers um, uh, apart from um, education and charity. Um, thing to look out for here is to, to do a price lock before that comes into effect. So um, customers need to buy in February um, with an annual committed term in order to avoid the uh, price uh, price increase. Obviously, it'll only defer that. It will come into effect when they come to renew it in a year's time or you know, uh, uh, you know, in the future. Um, but it's, it's certainly a good way of deferring is to, to buy an annual um, SKU today or February, should you say. And then um, one last thing uh, from me is the audio conferencing update. So um, there's been a promotion running in uh, both EA and CSP where customers um, can get uh, a promotion giving them audio conferencing for free. Uh, Microsoft are going, going or have announced that in the coming months they're going to add um, you know, unlimited dial in and dial out capabilities for teams um, for free. So. Um, so look out for that one. Uh, as soon as we've got more information on that, we, we will let you know. Um, Mr. Lane, would you uh, like to add anything there? Um, certainly. Um, I think the core, the core thing we need to consider here is that we have multiple scenarios that are now gonna be required by each partner that's on this call in terms of your current customer base, your uh, engaged prospect base, and the messaging that you need to take out to both customers and prospective clients but what we can actually see with this longer term view into the csp space is how we can help you with those challenges and options and the opportunities that are presented through those the core thing um, here is to say that bytes are here to support you each of you as a partner has a nominated account manager that sit within my team um, and has access to the skills around them to myself, to my team leaders within the teams who are fully versed within all of the environments and the, the components that John has spoken through there. The core thing here is to say, please engage with your account manager. Um, we understand that we need to work through with you as a partner, the scenarios that are presented um, by your current customers and any potential prospects that you're working on. Our role is then to support you as your virtual Microsoft specialist in understanding how that affects you moving forward. Um, does Do we need to provide specific work and support for you on specific customers? But understand then what that modeling and timeline looks like for not just you as the partner, which is obviously affecting both how you go to market into your customer and prospect base, but also is there any cause and effect in terms of your own rebate stack and partner and credit stack? Um, and what we, what we obviously can do as part of that is then provide those options for you to help you support you uh, in terms of those conversations. And as many as, as many of you know, as a partner, Bytes will happily support you and have those physical conversations with you, with the customer and or the prospect. So there's a number of things um, and a number of options that are going to become available to you as partners moving forward. But the core component here is to actually engage with your account manager and let us come and support you. That's what we're here to do from the outset. The secondary component of that is how do you do, how do you look at that modeling moving forward? And one of the core components now is to understand a little bit more about your customers and prospects in terms of what are they doing as a business moving forward? Things like um, acquisition disposals, what's their technical roadmap? What's their growth? Do they have any consolidation plans? Are they bringing staff back post COVID? because that can affect the, the modeling moving forward. Secondly, um, um, to add real value to that is to understand the utilization of that Microsoft product stack that they're using. We see day in, day out, um, many, many organizations that have or pay for licensing or consume licensing that they're not actually using. And that becomes also an important factor in that that helps drive the modeling in terms of how do we go and communicate with you to your customers and prospects in terms of what's the best model for them moving forward. To, to aid that, Bytes actually provide to you as partners a, a number of platforms um, that can be utilized to, um, to, sorry, that can be used to find, 
uncover and drive that utilization information and help build platforms that allow you to attach services to them. And as part of that, and as part of um, today's webinar, we're going to actually, well, I've got Glenn Rogers with us. Glenn works within our um, software asset management team. And we're actually going to give you a quick view of how powerful the uh, Quantum for 365, in this case, platform is in terms of helping you with those customer conversations to build out this roadmap of where they should go with these changes with CSP, but also to give you a quick view of the platform to understand how this can be utilized by you as a partner to build out service stacks and actually make you stickier with the customer. So with that in mind, I'm going to close off with the corporate component reminder again to say, please come and speak to your account manager in the first instance. I know many of the partners I've already engaged with, um, with my account managers to help not just in the physical unpicking of which is the best route forward, but also in terms of coaching, supporting your sellers in terms of their conversations to engage the customer with the right information to take the customer on the journey in terms of understanding what options they have. So please, re please engage with your account manager. To that end, I'm now going to pass over to Glenn, who's going to give you a very high level view of the power of quantum and how that allied to our power in our Microsoft knowledge and being able to build options, provide you a very compelling message into your customer and prospect base. Thank you, Ian. So good morning, everyone. I'm Glenn Rogers. As, uh, as Ian mentioned, I sit within the software asset management and services team here at Bytes. And what I'd like to do um, very briefly today is to show you some elements of our quantum tool set um, and how we believe it will enable uh, you and your customers to, to kind of underwrite some of the decisions that they may face as a result um, of, of the changes that Microsoft announced under the banner of the, the new commerce experience. So by way of introduction, Quantum 365 um, is a tool set that we've designed to give visibility and understanding of what is occurring on a customer's Office 365 tenant and within their Azure AD environment. Um, I should at this juncture point out that the applications for Quantum, the data it provides uh, you know, from a day-to-day -day management point of view, managing joiners, movers and leavers, security and governance, etc., are vast and I'm occasionally guilty of perhaps overlooking those features in, in, and focusing maybe too much on the kind of cost containment and the license optimization piece that we do with Quantum. Um, but given that the, the scope of today's conversation you know, is very much around that kind of optimization piece, that is where we will be focusing and, and that's what I will be touching largely upon really how we can use Quantum to, to really help between now and February slash March in, in lieu of the changes that Microsoft have announced. I should also point out we have similar tooling available to measure and manage Azure consumption, but again, that's that's less relevant to today's conversation. So when we land within Quantum, um, the tool itself will provide a number of recommendations out of the box. You know, it will look at behavior of certain accounts and maybe recommend that they could be provisioned as a shared mailbox rather than as a user account, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but personally, I kind of like to use the, get a bit more manual and, and then use the filters to kind of get down some of the information that we want to see. Um, so what I'm drawing up here is a list of all of the users on the tenant. And um, this particular tenant we're looking at is a development partner of ours. It's a relatively small tenant and the data is obfuscated. Um, but clearly, if this was you know, your tenant or your customer's tenant, we'd be looking at sort of first name dot last name at customer dot com now. And where I see quantum kind of really fitting in between now and February, March is to make a couple of changes to your, your customer's tenants. Um, Quantitative changes, whereby we're not necessarily changing the suites or the, or the product makeup of their, their their agreements. We're just simply fine tuning the you know the, the the quantities, making sure that we're not buying anything that we're not using. And qualitative changes, whereby we do take a closer look at what are the subscriptions and what are the licenses that have been assigned to various users, making sure that they are making making the, the best of them, making the most out of them. So to begin with, I'll I'll run through how we look for some of those kind of quantitative changes. Um, so ultimately looking at how many subscriptions are we buying per customer? Are we buying the right quantity? Are we going to take advantage of, the, of this offer to um, you know, commit for 12 months or 36 months? Or actually, are we going to um, pay that 20% premium in return for flexibility? But if we do so, we need to make sure we're making absolute use of that flexibility, right? There's, there's quite literally no point overpaying for licenses if we're not going to then manage them and, and, and use our ability to flex up and down. So to begin with, just looking at this, uh, this list of tenants here, just to, to look at some of the areas we can very quickly look for for potential savings. 
I'm going to take a look for um, accounts that have licenses assigned to them, but have been disabled. So this is something we come across quite a lot um, when we're helping customers review their estates. Um, often it's a failure in the sort of joiners, movers, leavers process, whereby somebody from IT does proactively go in and disable the account, but they don't know that they need to remove that, that chargeable license from it. Um, as I say, this is our development partner, so I would expect a very low number here, but as we can see, there are still a handful of um, accounts that have subscriptions attached to them. So what I would want to do is, is be kind of getting in there and removing those subscriptions straight away. Uh, definitely on a month to month basis, if we're paying 20% more for those subscriptions and particularly before making any decisions as to how much we should or shouldn't commit to a 12 or 36 month offer. You know, th these are the kind of things I would want to tidy up. Um, sometimes, you know, it's the case that organizations leave the licenses attached to these um, disabled accounts um, to assist with kind of legal hold or email retention and, and what have you. And, and whilst there's a, sh a shred of sense in that chain of thought, ultimately the most expensive way to, to maintain the integrity of somebody's mailbox once they've left your business is to pay Microsoft for an ongoing live production business productivity um, subscription. So uh, yeah, absolutely something I would be looking to, to, to get tidied up. Um, again, purely just looking at quantity at this stage, uh, looking for accounts that haven't been active in a certain period of time. So these may be people that have left the business and, and, and nobody's kind of reported back to IT that that's the case. There, there may be another reason for that. But what we're seeking to do with Quantum is, is to take a look and say, all of these accounts have not been accessed in over 90 days. So you know, fairly safe to assume that's not just the case that someone's gone on holiday or is, is having a couple of weeks off. And the tool has been designed in such a way that if we're told that somebody hasn't logged in for over 90 days, we're empowered to quite quickly investigate that. So we can scroll over to the right and say, well, who is this person? What geographic territory do they sit in? What's their job title? What line of business are they in? Who is their line manager, et cetera, et cetera. So that from here, we can fairly quickly have all of the information at hand to establish why has that person not logged in? Is it the case that they've left and therefore we can disable their account? We can reharvest that license, et cetera, et cetera. Or they may be on long-term sick leave or maternity leave. And if that is the case, we can tag them as such. Because if you do have a, you know, if, you, if your customers do have an employee that's on maternity leave, clearly there's no point in them getting reminded daily that that person hasn't come back into work. From a qualitative point of view as well, what we can use Quantum to do is take a look at the subscriptions that your um, that your customers are purchasing and establishing whether they are making full use of the, uh, the the product sets that are available to them. Ideally, what we're hoping to do is where we can demonstrate that people aren't using everything that's been thrown at them is to move them onto a um, a more cost effective subscription for them. So for here, um, if we just look at something like the E3 suite, so we can take a look across the tenant. These are all of the components that make up E3, you know, at a fairly granular level. And we can see what is and isn't being used by the majority of users across the tenant. So particularly when we come to, to profiling users, um, you know, based on their job roles, particularly in sectors like hospitality, retail, uh, manufacturing, you know, where you're going to have a lot of users who probably don't have the same usage profile as, as a head office worker, should we say, then there's a lot of merit in, in, in establishing what the right subscriptions are to assign to each of those use cases. Um, what we can also do is look at things like um, users who are eligible to deploy a localized desktop application such as office project or visio and we can tell from quantum whether they have um whether they have done so by the the click to run activation method now i'm always keen to point out that there might be an explanation for this behavior it might be that you know quantum is telling us that somebody hasn't activated office via click to run that doesn't mean we can automatically take their e3 away and give them an e1 or what have you because it might be the case that they're using office over citrix or they're using like a legacy version of office and they're using their e3 uh, entitlement to do that but it's definitely cause for investigation because again if we can take a user from something like a project online plan two down to a project online plan one or somebody that has like an m365 e3 suite and move them down to an e1 or an F SKU, there are significant savings that can be made there again throughout the term when we're when we're paying for that flexibility that Microsoft are providing for that 20% premium, but also at those kind of crunch points before we make a decision as to whether we are going to commit for a 12 or 36 month period. Like I say, there's there's an awful lot more in here in terms of what Quantum is able to do. Um, a lot of it maybe doesn't fit the scope for today. And even some of the bits that, that probably do fit the scope for today, we probably won't fit in within the time, uh, within the time frame we have. So as Ian said, reach out to your account manager, um, you know, both about the, the, the changes around the, um, the new commerce experience, but also particularly around quantum and, and, and where, where it will and won't be suitable for your customers to help them make decisions. Um, 
but at that point I believe we've had some questions come in over over text already uh, if there are any more that you want to stick in the chat box please do and I'll, uh, I'll hand back to John because I suspect most of the questions will be directed towards his piece oh, apologies couldn't find the mute button uh, yeah thank you thank you for that Glenn um, so yeah I'm just looking at the questions now so just go through some of those. Uh, first one is uh, are upgrades available um, or possible midterm or only at renewal? So um, you will be able to upgrade midterm um, under new commerce experience um, under the legacy program. Um, as, uh, as explained, you effectively reduce down the number of subscriptions of E3 and instead buy new E5 subscriptions. And, and what that means is a a disjoint um, you know um, a seat assignment process so you lose the e3 licenses and then you buy e5 and you basically have to go and reassign those e5 licenses the the in place or midterm upgrades um, will basically allow you to go from e3 to e5 um, during the 12 month annual commitment if you like um, um, without having to uh, reassign those seats uh, next question uh, will there be a monthly term um, but annual commitment so uh, i guess that's uh, effectively what we have in csp today uh, and the legacy is an annual term um, but, but monthly uh, payments um, uh, that will be available in uh, new commerce experience uh, upon launch so uh, if i just explain that you'll be able to buy an annual committed offer so a 12 month commitment and you will be able to pay for those monthly um, but you'll be you know committing to microsoft to make those 12 uh, monthly payments um, what you won't have is a 12 month subscription where you can cancel at any point like you do today in, in csp um, if if you want you know that flexibility there'll be the new monthly um, part code which is a one month term and then you just basically renew it month to month to month um, or, or you choose to cancel. So um, there won't be a, a 12 month subscription like we have today with the ability to cancel at any point. Uh, interesting question number three. So my understanding is uh, where you sell a three year agreement uh, and the company stops trading, uh, you remain liable to Microsoft for the remainder of the term. 100% correct, yep. Um, it is a, a very significant risk for, for uh, I'll just read the question here, significant risk for very little return to the partner. And obviously, the partner takes any risk um, for companies with the low credit score. Um, yeah, thoughts on this uh, are, yeah, yeah, you know, we, we're, we're looking at this um, uh, for our customers. Um, uh, we're, we're looking at potentially, you know, looking at credit scores uh, and only offering the monthly billing option. Um, so that's a 12 month or 36 month term but with a monthly billing option um, to customers that meet a, a certain credit score or or have got a trading history uh, or and or with a got a trading history with bytes um, for, for everyone else it will be perhaps monthly billing only um, so that's the monthly um, monthly offer where we can cancel after one month if a uh, you know, customer doesn't make payment or or uh, you know, uh, goes into liquidation or whatever. So yeah, definitely want to think about that. Um, does the CSP margin removal in September next year affect direct and indirect resellers? Yes, it does. Um, so that will um, affect um, everyone. And so all resellers um, basically selling over 2,400 seats uh, uh, and or the um, uh, $1 billion of uh, uh, Azure consumed revenue. Uh, do we have to move customers to new commerce experience? Um, uh, yes. Uh, so um, due to the way Microsoft pay um, us as an indirect provider uh, and you as a, an indirect reseller um, come 1st of October next year, um, uh, just the economics, um, yeah, it just won't be viable to uh, allow a customer to continue on legacy CSP uh, post 1st of October next year. Um, and likewise, we won't be able to, to 
um, buy new or new customers into legacy uh, after March next year as well. So um, two, two time frames to think about there. One, we can't do things in March. Second, we're forced to move customers into new commerce experience in uh, end of September next year. That's all I've got in terms of questions. Um, if you do have any uh, questions following this uh, webinar, um, please just uh, either contact your um, Bytes account manager, um, complete the survey uh, after this um, uh, webinar closes, and uh, or, or drop a, an email to um, tell me more at bytes.co.uk and, and one of our uh, specialists will pick that up. So with that, thank you very much for your time. I um, hope that was uh, insightful um, and uh, we look forward to working with you uh, over the next few months to, to get your customers on board with uh, Newcom's experience and hopefully avoid the 10% price increase that's due in March.